again. Last time we looked at Pandoc and how you can convert one format of text file to another. We copied Markdown to PDF, we copied Markdown to DocX, we copied DocX to Markdown, and all kinds of other different combinations are possible there. But we didn't really talk about where these text files come from to begin with, or what's an easy format to use to get started using these text files for writing. And today we're going to cover the easiest type of markdown that you can do. It's called Markdown. And this has been developed, it was developed in 2004, mostly in use for bloggers, but you can use it for all kinds of stuff, as we'll see today. And, well, let's take a look at that. Okay, and here's the same document I showed you last week. This is my Going iPad book, and this is written entirely in Markdown with a little bit of extra formatting stuff put in with HTML. But basically, you can see there it's got the, we'll talk about this in a minute, but this is a, a link to a picture. This is a heading. This is one of the sub-sub headings, level three headings, and so forth. Basically, this is a text-based file. It's just a standard text-based file, but it ends instead of txt, it ends in the letters md for markdown. And normally I do my entire video showing you something in a command line or a terminal app. We're going to go a little bit different this route. This is my Mac desktop. and I'm going to do this on Mac today because it's got some really nice tools that will show you what you can get out of markdown. For example, this is Vim, which we're going to talk about one of these days. It's a very advanced text-based text editor, uh, similar to Emacs or something like that. You can use Nano or you can use anything you want, Notepad even. Anything that makes a straight text file. Probably not a word processor. Microsoft Word, not good. Word Grinder that we talked about a few weeks ago is also not so great for this. It's got to be able to save straight, plain, ASCII, something like that, text files. But then if you want to see the output of this thing, well, you can do what we did last week and use Pandoc to convert it manually. But I'm going to show you a way on the Mac that makes it really easy. Just go up here to the title bar, click on the little icon, and drag it to your Previewer app. And I've got one here called Marked 2, which is really nice. And it'll pop up here. It'll load in all the files. It loads in the Markdown text. It loads in the images. I've got all the images over here in this directory. You see the folder full of files. Some of them are JPEG, some are PNG, and somewhere in there is the going iPad complete markdown file. So basically it reads this text-based markdown file and trans translates it into something a little more visual. It makes the title of the book bigger. It makes the subtitle bit a little bit smaller. It's got a picture. And down here you get right regular standard text. Happens to be centered, which is nice. It's got a table of contents all formatted. And then you get into the chapters. You've got the chapter heading is big. The text that follows is you know, normal text size. You can do things like bold. You see cost and safety and backups are all in bold. Uh, I don't see any italic immediately, but it's in there. More pictures. Picture has a caption under it, which is nice. Tables. Not all Markdown supports tables, but this Marked 2 app does. And, well, Pandoc does as well, so we'll get into that now. So this is the kind of stuff you get out of Markdown. You write in it in a straight text editor, and you can compile it to be HTML or PDF or whatever it is you want with something like Pandoc. Okay, so let's get rid of Marked here for a bit. Let's get rid of Vim for a minute. And I will link in the notes below this video to a Markdown cheat sheet. This particular one here is made by GitHub. If you're into GitHub, all their documentation is written in Markdown. So if you learn this and eventually go to GitHub for some reason, you already know how to write for it. But I will link to this in the notes. It's a PDF. There's lots of non-PDF things out there, but it's really simple. If you want to do a header, you use the little hashtag symbol or the pound sign or whatever you want to call that little tic-tac-toe mark. A single one is your biggest heading. It, it's the same thing as an H1 tag in HTML. Two of the little hashtags is an H2 tag and three is an H3 tag and they go all the way down to H6. 
I've never used an 8.6 for anything, but it's there if you need it. If you want your text to not be st standard normal plain text, you can make your text in italic by using the asterisk at the be beginning and the end. Uh, another option is to use the underscore symbol. Some people f prefer that one. I just use the stars. It's simpler. To make it bold, you use two stars or two underlines in the beginning and at the end. And like it says here in the in the uh, cheat sheet, you can combine them. Can here will be in bold, and the entire sentence will be in italic. So you can mix and match these in pretty complicated ways. Block quotes. You want to quote somebody and have it indented with one of these little lines right here. You just use the little greater than symbol at the beginning of the line. Again, if you're just writing in a very basic bare bones text editor, you won't see anything other than the characters you're typing. The greater than sign or the asterisk or the hashtags, all you'll see is straight plain text. But the text can easily be converted to something really simple. I mean, it's not that hard to write in very basic HTML, but this is easier still. And if you just want to focus on your text without the formatting, this is a really good way to go. And of course, you've got things like bullet lists and numbered lists where you just put in the star in the beginning, nothing at the end, and you've got a list of things with stars, which can even be indented or have sublists. Numbered lists works the same way. Images is a little bit more complicated. You put the exclamation point, some kind of text, a caption or a label inside square brackets, followed by parentheses and a full path name or URL to a picture. We'll do something with that in a minute. And okay, here it explains. You got the, the uh, exclamation point, the alt text in brackets, and the URL in the parentheses. Not too bad. Links work very similar. You, ha you don't have the exclamation point, but otherwise it's kind of the same as an image. You've got the text, and then you've got the URL. And these can be internal links, external links, depends on what you're outputting with. And once in a while you may want to actually have one of these characters, like a square bracket, or an asterisk, or a hashtag. And if you do, you can use the backslash key to escape those. And then you'll see the actual little stars or whatever printed. And you can do backslash escape for any of these other characters down here. So let's play with this a little bit. Again, I will link to this sheet in the, in the show notes. You can print this out, keep it on your screen, whatever you want to do. Okay, so I have an app here called BB Edit. It's uh, one of the fancier text-based text editors for the Mac. I use it all the time. I like it. I also use Vim and Emacs, so I'm not cheating today. I'm just showing you something that's Mac-based for once. Just because it's text doesn't mean it has to be on the command line. A lot of this stuff, not necessary. So I watched a movie last night. I watched The Phantom of the Opera from 1923. Silent movie. <sighs> Hour and a half of silent movie. It was actually pretty good. But I want to write a review of that. So... I'm going to write that right here. I'm going to start out with the title of this thing. And I can't even type phantom right, so I'll go back here and fix that. And that's the first line of the review. Of course, it's the title of the article. This is going to go on a blog somewhere. So I use the little hashtag. I don't have to but I put a space after the hashtag because I think it looks better. It's not necessary. Something to go under it. My name. And then some information about the movie. And I don't know who that is, so I'm going to have to look it up in a little while. Okay, so there I've got the heading. I've got the subheading with my name, which is a little bit smaller than the title of the article. Then I've got the star and the director there in third level headings. So now I'm going to, before I type any description, I want to see a picture. Now I've already planned ahead for this, so I've got a couple of pictures that I uploaded to my web server. 
and I'm going to link to those pictures here. You're not going to see them in the text editor because it's a text editor. All you get is text. But like I showed you on that cheat sheet, for an image you use exclamation point. Then inside the square bracket you put some kind of text. And I typed it wrong again, didn't I? Twice. There's some text, that's just a alt text or description. Then inside the curvy bracket, brackets, I put in the URL to the image. I write for a blog called Horror Bulletin. I also do their podcast. So check out Horror Bulletin. It's a lot of fun. But I also know that I've uploaded the pictures to this URL. HTTP colon slash slash, got to put the whole thing in there, horrorbulletin.com slash phantom1.jpg. And there it is. Okay, so there's our picture. And now you'll notice that the uh, alt text is blue and the URL is green. And these little hashtags up here are blue and the basic text is white. BB Edit, the editor I'm using, has syntax highlighting built in for Markdown. It realizes that this is a sort of a language, a description language, and it colors things in to make things a little more convenient. A lot of other editors will do that as well. Emacs and Vim have plugins, and many of the custom-made Markdown editors for like the iPad or Mac or Windows will do that as well. So it's kind of a standard thing. So now would be the time where I type in a whole bunch of text for this review, and let's do that. I've already written it, so let's just paste it in there. And there we go. As you can see, this is just normal text. It's white because there's not a lot of formatting in there. This word right here in the center is, maybe you can see that that's a little bit brighter than the others. Not. It's got the little asterisks on the front and the back. It's in italic. That's how I tell it I want that word in italic. The rest of this doesn't have any special formatting. At the end of each paragraph, you leave a blank line. It doesn't indent. It's just a text file. So the only way you can tell that it's a new paragraph is just blank lines. And I don't have any other special formatting in this text. If I wanted to add a second picture right in the middle of this, I could do that. The video box. And this one's at http colon slash slash bulletin.com slash phantom2.jpg. Okay, so now I've got a whole bunch of text with a picture in the middle, a picture at the top, and some fancy headings. And maybe at the bottom I'm going to add a, a, a link in here for an affiliate link. Uh, just a link, not an image. I'll say over here in the text portion, buy this movie from Amazon. And I don't have an actual affiliate link for it right now, so I'm just going to put in there http colon slash slash amazon.com. And that would be a link to Amazon. Again, just like, not but, buy. Again, this is just like the picture, just like the picture URL up here. You've got the text and you've got the URL. Of course, at the end of the URL, you've got a picture file name of some kind, JPEG or PNG or whatever. The only difference in the formatting is the picture has the exclamation point and the plain old text link does not. Okay, so I've typed this thing in. I should save it. I'm going to save this to my desktop as Save this to my desktop as, oh, we'll call this phantom.md. And again, the MD extension means markdown. It just lets some of the editors and things know what it is. And here it is. Again, if you look at this in some other app, for instance, text edit, you don't get any more generic than that. Here is the text in text edit. It's got the little hashtags, it, it looks exactly the same, just without the, without the syntax coloring. 
So let's get rid of that. Marked is just a nice little utility that Mac uses to show and convert Markdown files to something more useful. Okay, so here's you can see what we just came up with. We've got the big title up here, Phantom of the Opera by Brian Shell, starring by, it's a little bit smaller, they, they get smaller as they go down. I described it wrong, this is the box, okay, I got my pictures backwards. Here's the picture with the caption. It's the wrong caption because I did it backwards, but it's there and it's a picture. Here's my text. There's that other picture right in the middle. And down here is the link. And you can see here that it tells you where it's going, Amazon.com. So at this point, I can style it different ways. Now this Mark II thing has all kinds of different layouts, different fonts, different layouts and text formats and, and that's all really nice but the basic the basic HTML is always going to come out fairly plain if you want to style your HTML you use CSS or something like that but at this point I could post this to a website I could cut it or cut and paste it into some other text document it's got a lot of uses or we could do like we did last time and use Pandoc let me pop up an iTerm -term terminal here Make it a little bigger. Okay, so now we're going to do what we did last week. We're going to use Pandoc to convert phantom.md into an HTML file. And to do that, we're going to go Pandoc and we're going to give it the output of the, the, the markdown file that we're working with, phantom.md. And then we're going to tell it that we're going from markdown and that we're going to HTML and the output file we will call phantom.html now again if you don't want HTML you can do docx for word you could do PDF you could do latex you could do any dozens of formats that we talked about last week with pandoc it'll convert almost anything so we hit enter and it worked very quickly. Let's make sure it did something. Yep, there's phantom HTML right there in the middle. So let's look at that. And there it is. You've got H1, H2, H3, all those headings that I said it would convert. These were just hashtags in the markdown file. Now it's an H1 with an ID tag and closing H1 over here h2 with the id tag and the h2 over here see it's just it's the same thing as html it's just a shorthand way of doing it it does a lot of the conversion automatically for you uh, once you're done with all the h3 tags you've got image and it's got a full image tag here with the image source the alt text caption and the figure wrapper uh, down here where we said not was italic it puts in the EM tags. Second picture is down here in the middle. It looks good. And last here at the ending, we have an ahref link tag. Standard markup. So let's get out of the text side of this. Load up Safari. Well, here's our file. Let's open that with. Okay, and here it pops up. And we've got the fan of it. Well, same thing, basically. It looks just like what we had in the markdown. You got the text at the top and the picture and the caption, more text, another picture, and a link there at the end. And again, it's very basic for a website, pretty ugly for a website, but it's basically generic HTML. You could plug this into your blog, uh, put it into a Jekyll system or something like that. There's lots of things you can do with markdown. And again, like I showed you in the beginning, I've written entire books in markdown. It, it, it's a nice, easy, text-based system. If you want to write in text and you, and you care more about the content than you do the formatting in the beginning, Markdown is the way to go. And of course, there's an entire chapter of Markdown in Going Text, Mastering the Power of the Command Line, available wherever books are sold. And of course, I'll see you next week with something interesting. See you!